Hello everyone, welcome to our third live here on Facebook and as always we'll upload this live series to our IGTV and YouTube channels so you can watch again later. BJF is honored to have you here as usual. My name is Dimitris Kevenin, I'm Brazilian, I'm a forest engineer and project coordinator at the Black Jaguar Foundation, proudly. Those who have been watching us the past weeks and the ones that follow us in our social media for sure already know. But for those who haven't, the Black Jaguar Foundation is a Dutch-Brazilian organization founded by Bim Box, a Dutch entrepreneur. After months exploring the Cerrado and the Amazon looking for a Black Jaguar, he was instead confronted with mass deforestation, which prompted him to act. Since then, our mission has been the restoration of degraded ecosystems alongside the Araguaia River to form a mosaic and an immense biodiversity corridor. Well, long have you heard me speaking about this biodiversity corridor already, but I haven't gone deep into the details yet. So today, we'll dive into the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor, know some of its characteristics and importance for all of us. So let's go! The concept behind the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor is to connect fragments of native vegetation with reforested land, creating a pathway for nature from the center to the north of Brazil alongside the Araguaia River. The Black Jaguar Foundation then embraced the task of restoring degraded land within the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor. While the corridor is simply huge, it encompasses an area of around 10.4 million hectares, as I told you previously, stretching from the south of Goiás State until the Atlantic Ocean in Parai State, in a 2,600 kilometers long route and we work in a range of up to 20 kilometers from each side, each side of the Araguaia margins. Therefore, the corridor is present in six Brazilian states, which you can see here in the image, Goiás, Mato Grosso do Sul, Mato Grosso, Tocantins, Pará, and Maranhão. The corridor connects two very important biomes in Brazil and in the world, the Amazon rainforest and the Cerrado Savana, as you can see here, in the image. Okay, um, a few years ago, all we had was that information I just shared with you. But in order to properly conduct restoration processes and also engage with local communities, we needed to know much, much more. That's why we started a massive mapping job of the Araguaia Corridor. Firstly, we had the help of the Brazilian branch of the World Resources Institute, WRI Brazil, which provided us with an amazing platform of the MAPIT corridor, as you can see here in the image. And this platform helps us until today in multiple parts of our decision-making processes. Well, and last year in 2019, BJF started a cost-benefit analysis of the whole Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor. In partnership with reputed researchers from Sao Paulo University and a private consultant, you can see the researchers here in this image. So the first thing researchers did was to refine this mapping of the corridor and get as many information as possible into the characteristics of each part of it. The first thing we found out is that only 0.4% of the corridor is located in urban areas and the remaining 99.6% is rural land. We also found out that a little more than half of the corridor is located within the Amazon domain and the remaining 47.6% is located within the Cerrado. So now we know precisely, we had the idea that it was equally distributed like half and half, but it's a little more uh, within the Amazon domain than in the Cerrado. Well, uh, as, I previously, as I previously mentioned, the corridor spreads through six Brazilian states. So also within the states, 112 Brazilian municipalities, three of which are entirely located within the corridor area, as you can see here. So in this image, you can see so the, the, the south part of the corridor is uh, the above image and the north part of the corridor is below. Also, we assessed population density and we found out 
that population density is higher in the Amazon portion of the corridor, so the, the below image, especially because of the municipalities of Tucuruí and Belém, which is the capital of the Pará state. So more people, no, more, people, more people are living in the Amazon portion of the corridor than in the southern portion. Well, uh, I mentioned Tucuruí. Tucuruí is a municipality, but it's also uh, an, a very important spot in the corridor for holding the huge Tucuruí power dam, which is the lar largest, uh, the second largest 100% Brazilian hydropower plant. It is important then that riverbanks and also the margins of the reservoir are protected with forests so sediments don't get don't get carried out into the water reducing the capacity of the dam so if you make the the dam shallower then you reduce the capacity of the dam we also assess soils and soils within the corridor are generally poor in nutrients as i mentioned in the previous talks we had but they also vary a lot in terms of clay content and uh, the more clay a soil has the more water it can retain and the more it can sustain a forest like physiognomy so it's important for us as restoration practitioners to know um, the soil type the soil type we're working in in order to properly restore the the the, the vegetation the, the native vegetation also, as you can see here in the image, there's a great portion of the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor, approximately 25%, that is seasonally, seasonally floated, and that creates unique conditions for different ecosystems to thrive. So you can see here in the image, in here, uh, the image in the above, you can see here um, that uh, along, uh, there's like a wetland in the middle of the corridor, and that enhances biodiversity as well. So uh, about, how, uh, about altitudes, uh, most of the corridor is located in lowlands in central and north of Brazil. So altitudes are around from 700 to 300 meters above sea level. The exception is the spring of the Araguaia River, which is located in an altitude of around 1,000 meters above sea level. But uh, most of the way, the river is in a flat land. Well, I also explained to you in our previous lives that the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor stretches across two biomes, the Amazon rainforest and the Cerrado Savannah. But I also explained that several types of ecosystems are associated to these biomes. So in the corridor zone, one can find as many as 14 different vegetation types from floated grasslands to tall forests, as you can see here in the image. So the southern portion the south portion of the of the corridor is more sav a savanna-like uh, vegetation, and the northern part part of the corridor is more within the Amazon domain, so a forest-like vegetation. And we also assessed uh, how much of each vegetation type uh, we could find within the boundaries of the corridor. As we can see here, a little more than 50% of the of the corridor is of tall forests, so that could be e uh, either umbrophilus forest. Um, uh, which means evergreen forests or semi-deciduous forests. The other half is distributed into savanna and, uh, and grasslands formations. Also, within the corridor, one can find these conservation land that can vary on degree of protection depending on the category registered in the National System of Conservation Units, the SNUC, which is the National System of Conservation Units of Brazil. So, for example, APA, or Areas of Environmental Protection, uh, they are less restrictive than national or state parks, or even uh, ecological stations, for example. Um, so we have many categories of protected land. Also, uh, regarding indigenous lands, one can find within the corridor, there are lots of them, and uh, together with conservation units, they preserve most of the pristine sites of the corridor. Well, uh, it's amazing, right, that one can find such a variation of landscapes and people alongside one single river system in Brazil. And I have to say some of the most impressive landscapes as well. So here you can see an image of the of the Araguaia River. So very beautiful, very beautiful landscape. And I have to say the most amazing sunsets I have ever seen in my life are in the Araguaia, are in the Araguaia River. So yeah. It's, it's very, very beautiful. 
Okay, but then how does PJF act within the corridor? Well, as I said previously, we, re we restore degraded ecosystems alongside the Araguaia River. What I haven't explained is that PJF restore areas that are protected by the Brazilian Forest Code so they cannot be destroyed afterwards. The Brazilian Forest Code is one of the most advanced environmental legislations in the world. It demands landowners all around the country to preserve within their land a percentage of native vegetation. That percentage ver varies according to where you are and the type of native vegetation you have in your domain. Also, it is mandatory for the landowner to preserve a stripe of native, of native vegetation alongside rivers, springs, lakes, water bodies in general. Well, uh, we call these stripes of vegetation alongside water as permanent preservation areas, APPs in Portuguese. In this part of the land, no interference is allowed. You can see in this image that the crop is interrupted by the APP, which is around a river. And this farm, of course, can be considered to have respected the legislation. It has the vegetation stripe. And we call the percentage of vegetation that needs to be kept inside the property as legal reserve, or RL in Portuguese. So except for the Amazon region, every landowner in Brazil must keep at, must keep at least 20% of their land as native vegetation. In the Amazon region, one must keep from 35% to 80% of the vegetation intact, depending if you have either savanna or a forest inside your lands. In this portion of land, only sustainable management is allowed. You can see here in this image that there is a cropland and there's a forest right next to it. There's a patch of forest and this patch of forest is the legal reserve. It cannot be destroyed ever. Okay. Well, uh, this legislation, it was created in the 30s and it was perfected in 1965 and had a last modification in 2012. However, uh, some landowners had deforested their lands prior to the legislation. So the last modification of the, of the forest code in 2012, um, it demanded that landowners all across Brazil were given a deadline to restore their land APPs and legal reserves to comply with the law. However, one, they didn't know how to do it because restoring degraded ecosystems requires qualified knowledge. Some landowners tried, didn't succeed, giving up afterwards and accepting that fines were an easier way uh, to try to deal with it. And you can see here in this image, for example, this is a failure in terms of uh, restoration attempt. So the, the landowner here tried to restore a patch of forest alongside uh, a spring and uh, it was a complete failure. He didn't know which species to plant, which was the activity, activities he had to, to, to conduct in, in, in order to bring the vegetation back. So he spent money for nothing. Okay. And the second uh, thing is that restoration can be very expensive, sometimes even more expensive than the fines one would have to pay for not having restored the land. So, if we want this portion of, this portions of native vegetation to be back, we need to help landowners to do it. And that's what BJF does. Right now, we calculate that around 1 million hectares need restoration within the corridor. It's a lot, so it's a huge challenge, also a fun challenge, at least for me. <laughs> well, uh, I have showed to you guys previously where BJF is working right now, but um, for you to have an idea, we are here in the fringes of the Amazon rainforest, where it meets the Cerrado, working in both sides of the Araguaia River in the municipalities of Caseara, in the state of Tocantins, you can see here in the right-hand side, and Santana da Araguaia in Pará State, you can see here in the pin on the left-hand side. It's one of the regions with the most environmental deficit in the corridor, so we'll stay there for a while still, but it's, a, it's also a very interesting region because of the beauty and also because uh, it's where the Amazon meets the Cerrado, so the biodiversity is just amazing. It's just very, a very beautiful place uh, to be in. 
Well, um, today I spoke about aspects of the Araguaia Biodiversity Corridor, and next week we're going to discuss ecological restoration, so science and practice behind it, and all techniques that we use to ensure we get healthy ecosystems back. So stay tuned to our social media not to miss it. Uh, visit our website also, which is black-jaguar.org. Consider donating to us, to our project, to our cause, and to bring back native vegetation to this portion of Brazil. Well, I thank you now for your attention, and I will now open for questions, which I expect my friend Daisy to have sent to me already. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, she has. Okay, the first question, very interesting one. Thanks for asking. Um, how can corridors be created by restoration in the scenarios you have showed us? Okay, um, well, we always try to plan restoration in order to connect native vegetation fragments, uh, but we are lucky for one reason. Uh, water courses already connect among each other naturally. So since permanent preservation areas need to be restored and they are alongside rivers, they already form uh, corridors. So we are fine with that and it's easier that way. Okay, second question. Uh, where is the spring of the Araguaia River? Well, the spring of the Araguaia River is in the municipality of Mineiros, which is in the state of Goiás. Uh, it's close to Emas National Park and also close to the border with uh, Mato Grosso State. So uh, it is located in the south, por south portion of the corridor, as I showed you already in the map. Well, there's another question here about the, uh, the Araguaia River. So does the Araguaia River change throughout the year? Yes, yes, and it changes a lot. It is amazing to see that when you are in the region. And for you to have an idea, the level of the river can vary up to 30% from the dry uh, to the rainy season uh, in an extreme year, of course. And I have seen it, it's quite beautiful, you know, when, when there's the dry season, you can see the sand banks um, in the river, and then in the rainy season, everything is gone, and, the, and even the forest in the margins uh, is floated, so it's very beautiful. And sometimes the ferry can lose control, but that's another story. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, another question here about the Araguaia, uh, the Araguaia, but now it's about the Araguaia word itself. Uh, what does the, the word Araguaia stand for? Well, uh, this is a very, very nice question. Uh, Araguaia is an indigenous word uh, and it, it means uh, river of red macaws, if I'm not mistaken. So it's very poetic. And yes, there are lots of uh, red macaws in the region. Very, very beautiful birds. They are very beautiful. Well, uh, I think there are no further questions. Well, thank you all for attending to this live. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'll see you next week when we're going to discuss ecological restoration. See you then.